Hello, and welcome to Draw With Me. I'm Danny Gregory. It's Thursday, as it is every week at this time. And every week at this time, we also get together and we draw. We have fun, we talk about drawing, we talk about life, and we, I don't know, just get back in touch with our art-making components, the parts of us that, that make art. Um, so this week is, I don't know, I've been really busy this week. I've been doing a lot of stuff. Um, I've been getting ready for an event tonight that I'll tell you about in a little, in a little bit. And I've just been, I don't know, I, I've been, some of you have probably seen me way too much. I think this is like the fourth or fifth time that I've done some kind of uh, live event this week. But uh, I really enjoy doing it and I enjoy seeing you and talking to you. So it is great to be back doing it again today. So one thing that I've also in, in, introduced to our wide uh, array of ways of communicating with you is we're starting to make posts on YouTube. So I don't know if you've ever seen that. It was actually kind of new to me, but there's kind of almost like a little blog that is part of our YouTube channel. And if you go up to where it says community, you'll see that there are blog posts. And so what I'm trying to do is earlier in the week, I'm trying to write a little introduction to what we're going to be doing in Draw With Me. Uh, and if there's a reference picture, I'm going to try and put it up there, or I might show an example of what I'm going to do so that you don't come to it going, Whoa, what the hell is he doing now? So um, that's just and I'm not sure, I think if you're subscribed to it, maybe you're notified of the fact that I put up a comment. It's new to me, as I said, but feel free to comment on it. Feel free to, to uh, you know, let me know what you think. Mom, we got somebody from Uganda here today. Ah, very good. Who's from Uganda? Uganda, Vienna. Penny Ward. Oh, excellent. Good. Well, nice to meet you, Penny. Um, and uh, Kunal, feeling under the weather. Well... Hopefully this will pick you up a little bit. So um, what did I want to talk about today? I want to, oh, so let me, I mentioned that tonight we're going to be doing something and that is we are going to be doing this, which is uh, Q&R Live. So Q&R Live is the thing we do about once a month and it's free, it's open to the public um, and it is basically a, um, a webinar, a seminar, a, it's not really a workshop, it's really more of a panel, a pan, panel discussion, right, right. Um, so it's uh, basically an opportunity for us to bring some experts on a topic and talk about one aspect or another of art supplies. We've done the ones on brushes, on markers, um, and now we're going to be doing one on paper. And there's so much to learn about paper, so much. It, it's the kind of thing we take for granted. It's kind of in the background, but it can make such a difference to the materials that you're using and the way that you express yourself and whether or not your artwork is going to last. There's just a lot of different things that goes into paper. So we've got some paper experts. We're going to be talking about how paper is made. We're going to talk about the things that you should think about when you go shopping for paper, why some paper is expensive and other paper isn't, what you should do. So um, come along to that. Bring your questions. We'll be answering every question, or hopefully every question that is uh, presented to us. And we'll just hang out and do that. And if you can't make it for some reason, sign up anyway, because we're going to be recording this whole event. So if for some reason you won't be able to be there, it's going to be at 4.30 p.m. Pacific. So 7.30 Eastern um, and various other times at various other points in the world, but, uh, it is going to be probably 90 minutes long, or definitely 90 minutes long. Some, sometimes we run, we, we always go into it thinking, how are we going to fill up 90 minutes? And then we end up saying, oh my God, the 90 minutes are up and we haven't done everything. So but we have to end on time because we're going to immersive Van Gogh. That's true. We're going to the immersive Van Gogh show. Um, tonight after it so we literally have to leave almost immediately so we will be we will be ending on time and we'll be getting out of there but it will be great sign up it's on zoom it's free you just need to there's a link down below are you going to put the link into the chat no all right the, the link if you go and read the stuff underneath this this video um you'll see it there um and uh 
it is there. Do, do I have it? Okay, so Amber put it in there. Great. So it is there. That all you have to do is click on that link. So you got to uh, register. Yeah, and you have to register or else you won't be able to get in. So please do it. And it will be fun. You'll learn a lot. I mean, Windsor Newton. it's sponsored by Windsor Newton. True. That's true. All right. Thank you, Ed McMahon. <laughs> Or are you Doc Severance? I'm going to try to be nice today. I'm trying. Yes, it's a we've had a lot. Day. We've had huge numbers of complaints about JJ's behavior. Yeah, and people don't like me. People, people like you, but they don't like you uh, being the the inner Sorry. critic. The inner critic. So the outer so, critic. The outer critic, exactly. So she's going to be nice and helpful, and that's the way we like her. So good. All right. Um, so. That's the, that's your assignment for today. It's to, as it is said, it's today. So you better get your button gear and sign up for it today, um, or else you'll miss it. All right. So that's that is that. Um, so what I want to talk to you about today is a certain way of looking about drawing, looking at drawing that I've been thinking about. You know, I think I think drawing is obviously something that. I love, and you love too, although your love might be, um, you might feel that your love is one-sided, that you love drawing, but drawing doesn't love you, um, <laughs> such is life. But I want to talk about why it's important to love it anyway, and why I think um, it's important for all of us, all 184 of us, or however many are watching right now, to become evangelists for drawing, because Drawing is a misunderstood skill that is an essential human skill that we all have, but underutilize. And we underutilize it because we are, we think, you know, we don't have the ability, we don't have the skills. We, I've talked about that endlessly. Um, so, you know, at some point in our lives, seven, eight, nine, nine, probably nine or 10 years old, we suddenly decide that we can't do it anymore and we lose this ability. But the fact is that drawing in its most essential form is an opportunity to communicate. And I'm not talking about making art that, you know, reveals your innermost thoughts, although that's certainly a great way to communicate and to communicate really profound things. I'm talking about something a bit more mundane, which is drawing as a tool for expressing ideas and explaining things, explaining things, a really basic thing, right? Like we've all had that experience of uh, somebody's coming to visit you and you need to draw a map. Slightly less true in these days of Google Maps, but it's still true. Like you might want to say, you know, I need to draw a diagram or I need to tell somebody how to use our uh, are somebody saying at your house, house sitting for you, and you need to explain to them how to use your TV, right? So, so the, there's one way of approaching it, which is to say, I'm going to write down thousands of words to explain it all. It may or may not be clear, but a simpler way of doing that is drawing. And it doesn't have to be a great drawing, but it needs to be a clear drawing. And that's part of the problem that we have when we try to express ourselves through drawing when we're not comfortable with it is our form of expression, our, our, our usage of the alphabet, the language, the elements of the language of drawing are confused and unclear themselves because they're rusty. It would be as if we were suddenly trying to speak, you know, high school French again, um, or we were trying to do, uh, you know, a, diff a quadratic equation or something, something that we sort of vaguely knew from a long time ago. We haven't done it in a long time, so we've forgotten how to do it. So that's why it's important to have this, to have to to reintroduce drawing as a means of communication in um, in everything that we do, you know, and to look for opportunities to to break things down into what I'm going to call infographics. Infographics is kind of a highfalutin word for essentially a diagram, right? Um, how do you explain something in steps? And that's something that's that's really useful. You know, you can you could you could take a recipe. And you could make a recipe entirely visually. You could uh, explain a process to somebody. How do you go about solving a particular problem? How do you fix something? Even how do you think of an idea? You know, we, we can break things down into steps and we can use drawings or illustrations as ways of doing that. 
Okay, so, um, but if your drawing is unclear or not confident, right, that's, that's a lot of the problem that we have with drawings. Our drawings, our lines are not confident. And so therefore, they're, they're open to misunderstanding. And, you know, there, there's a lot of communication tools that we have that we use a lot and that's why we're good at them. So right now, uh, talking is obviously something that we do all the time and we've developed a big vocabulary or we've developed an appropriate vocabulary, right? We have, you certainly have. <laughs> yes, we have a vocabulary that's appropriate to the kinds of things that we talk about, right? So if you were um, a doctor, you would know the language of, of medicine and you would have those words at your fingertips if you're a lawyer, you know, if you're an engineer, whatever it is, you have those words at your, at your fingertips because you practice them a lot because you've taken the time to learn them. Again, if you're, if you're a cook or chef, particularly a professional, you understand all these processes. You understand what the difference is between different ways that you slice vegetables and you have words to explain them all. So that's kind of complex, but when it comes to drawing, it doesn't have to be that complex. You just have to have clarity and facility with explaining and, and, and drawing and diagramming things. So that's what I was thinking about doing today is, is to, take, um, to take a process that we all do all the time and uh, just break it down and try and explain it and use this as an opportunity to, to really to practice this skill and to also to talk about what are the ways of drawing that we might want to use to explain that thing you know like do we want to do really complex drawings do we want to do really beautiful drawings do we want to do really expressive drawings you know what kinds of lines do we want to use what's the role of color in all these things it's a lot of th it's things to think through so that then when you do it you go okay i know how to do this i have the right tools for doing it uh, i'm not kind of reinventing it or i'm not obscuring my meaning my communication by you know a bunch of uh, unnecessary arty stuff you know and this skill is like it's something that was absolutely essential in the 19th century you know so if you were a victorian um naturalist charles darwin for instance charles darwin drew he would draw the specimens that he saw he would draw um, you know, maps. He would draw uh, diagrams of his ideas. Uh, if you were Thomas Edison, you would draw the, the, the experiments you were doing. You would draw the results, the, you know, the, um, the products that you were making. And, and we might think, well, they didn't have cameras. They didn't have a lot of the tools that we have, you know, which is, which is certainly true. But I think that they were more in touch with their ideas because of this connection, you know, I mean, going back to the way that da Vinci explored natural phenomena through drawing, because as we know, when we draw, we see differently, we see more insightfully, we see details um, that we might not see if we're not practiced drawing. So, so drawing as a skill is a way of thinking and a way of thinking more deeply, more clearly, and um, and then also communicating that those insights. So, you know, um, yeah. So let's let's think about that. I'm distracted by all these people wondering about where the blog is. Okay, it's not a blog. It's it's, it's, it's just this community at the top. You'll see the word community. Not a great word. It used to be called something else. Now they've named it this. But that's where you go. Um, and if you subscribe, which of course I'm going to constantly insist on that you do, you will find it. Okay. Let's go back to talking about drawing. So, so my thought today was let's take something simple like making a cup of coffee, making a cappuccino. Have you ever made a cappuccino? Maybe you've ordered one, maybe you don't like them, but I've made cappuccinos. It's not my favorite thing to drink. I still prefer a nice cup of tea, but I've learned to make them and I have the tools to make them. So I thought I'm going to take this process of making a cappuccino and I'm going to break it down and think about it, and then we'll do a drawing based on it. So you can think of some other process if you want to. Of course, it's entirely up to you. But um, let's let's talk about about this and about. Um, so let's start by just writing down. I'm going to start writing down some some parts of um, what is involved in making um, a, a cappuccino. So um, obviously, you need beans. 
coffee beans. Um, how many of them? I would say, uh, say six scoops. That's how, when I make coffee, when I make a cappuccino, I, I don't really use espresso. I don't really do it well. <laughs> so this is not necessarily how to make a good cup of a cappuccino. This is how I make them. Um, scoop them. I need to, to grind it. Um, I need to have hot water. So I need to boil the water, but then I need to um, have a coffee maker. Uh, and then I need to have milk and I need to sort of steam it, I guess. And then um, what are the other steps? Um, I need to... What about getting the beans? Okay, so maybe maybe um, getting beans is, is part of it. And this could, this could expand to cover the entire world, but getting beans, getting milk, and so forth. Um, and picking then- mug. Picking a mug, <laughs> picking a mug, okay. So picking a mug, and then, um, I don't know, the actually introducing, pouring it, you know, like- Cinnamon. Cinnamon, if you wanted to, yes. You gotta draw the pattern on the top. You can <laughs> make, the, the make the leaf thing. Okay, so there's a bunch of stages to it. And I could just hand you this list, I guess. You know, I probably have to write quite a lot to explain what all these things were, what I was doing with them, you know. But here's a list that is a shorthand, but not particularly compelling. And I think it leaves stuff out, you know. Uh, again, the, the process of communicating this is going to be better when it's drawn because it's going to be clearer, I think, and it's going to be um, more engaging. Um, and, and, you know, in this case, it's a fairly simple process, but, you know, we could, we could make it, um, you know, more as artful as you want. I'm going to be using a little spoon. That's, that's oh, the tiny spoon, right? The tiny spoon. Right. Tiny. And like the little sugar cube. <laughs> the sugar cube or, or that little, um, you know, when they have like the uh, crystallized sugar on a stick. We don't have that. Um, I don't even know if we have sugar, do we? We All right. So okay. So yes. Um, good. I think okay. So we've got the bits, and they're kind of mis disorganized. So you know, we could sit down. We could take this, and we could just say, let's just write an essay about this. You know, and really write it all out, explain it, and give somebody like a big long list of it. Um, but we're not going to. We're going to draw it because this is this is what we're working on. So so I'm going to be using this cappuccino book appropriately from Hanamula in this nice drawing paper, and it is cappuccino colored. So we've already got that part of it figured out. It's already brownish. This camera doesn't really show how nice a brown it is. You need to put juxtaposition, put that color wheel on it. It's kind of next to that T. Put the color wheel on it and you'll see. All right, so here's the color wheel. That, I'm not sure what that tells you though. The color wheel, it's not showing. Oh, the, I'm, I'm, I'm what does that tell you, the color wheel? Anyway, so that's the color well, it wheel of ink. It shows you white versus colors versus caffeine. Yes, it's not white. So here's, here's white. It's not white. It's brown. It's tea colored, coffee colored. Ah, Pegasus, ah, Pegasus girl just bought that one. Excellent. Crack it open. Let's get into it. Rosalie says first page in her new Hanamula sketchbook. All right. Congratulations, Rosalie. Why can't I bring your name over here? There you go. All right. So good. Um, Feel free to add to this, but so, I mean, you know, we can have some reference if we want to. Here's a cappuccino. You know, do we need that? Maybe, maybe later on, maybe we'll come back to that. So I'm gonna start with a, I mean, I also wanna think about what is my composition of this page, you know, and maybe, maybe what colors do I wanna use? I have a brown uh, Windsor Newton marker, I have black, I have gray, um, I have a white gel pen, so those could all be elements. I've got um, a dip pen and I've got some various colors of uh, drawing ink. I've got peat brown here. I've got nut brown. So I could go to town with all those things. I've got an orange. And so, yeah, maybe, maybe we'll get into all that. But first of all, let's think about, let's start, I'm going to start um, thinking that maybe what I want to do is I want to array I want to arrange, array, place all of my elements around it and have a cup in the middle, you know, and see. Are you making a spread or just a page? I think I'll, um, 
I, don't, I think I'll start with a page. I'm not sure exactly. It's part of what, because I, I have to think, I have a lot of elements. I've got beans, I've got the grinder, I've got the kettle, I've got the coffee machine, I've got the milk, I've got, there's probably like a dozen things, but I'm gonna try and work smallish. So I'm gonna do it in a single page. All right, so that's one decision we have You're to make. You're gonna run out of room. Well, that's why I have a spread. <laughs> it's true, she, she's right. Uh, JJ's saying I'm gonna run out of room. But I have a page, so, you know, it's possible that I'll start here and then I'll branch out to this other side and then maybe I'll wanna write some stuff there. I mean, keeping in mind a cappuccino cup is actually quite small. That's true. So I'm gonna make it quite small and I'm just gonna draw basically where the cup is gonna go. I might go in and kind of embellish it later on. But, you know, I'm going to make uh, a pretty kind of simple cappuccino cup. Give it a little bit of a saucer. You know, but as you can see, it's like it doesn't need to be an incredible drawing at this point. Like, this might be cool if I go in and I really, you know, make an elaborate drawing like really make this detailed and really draw the little leaf in there and do all that that might be cool to have that kind of uh energized in the middle of the rest and make the rest all kinds of just like simple simple line drawings Did you mean to put that reference photo up um yeah let's have a look at the reference photo again why not so yeah so my cup is a bit more uh Swedish looking perhaps this is a Ikea. bit more time it is mine looks like it came from Ikea this looks more Italian uh, and it's got the it's got that cup you see it has the little thing of sugar and it has the tea, the obligatory teaspoon this looks like an American I think this is an American cappuccino honestly but we'll get back to that later on right now we're kind of working on the structure of this of how this all works and seeing where we're going okay um, Leslie, pay attention. Leslie's just chatting away, and, and uh, she forgot that we were actually doing something. Leslie said that I was indispensable and wonderful. So let's all right, so Leslie, nice. okay, uh, perfectly. Uh, she has she has good taste, yeah. obviously. Leslie can do no wrong. Okay, so I'm going to start by drawing some beans up here. Beans are pretty simple. I think I, I think you could you can tell that it's a bean. So that's that's part of what I'm thinking is like what is the essential kind of um remember that place in new york that used to have all the burlap sacks yes puerto rico see if my first drawing of them they look like little tacos because i've been living here for too long in uh, phoenix home of the taco but they basically have a little kind of um you know just like an eye in the middle that's sort of how they are so i'm just going to draw a bunch of those not, nothing too fancy and i'm not and i'm not trying to be specific about how many beans because i think what i'll do instead is i'm going to draw a scooper in fact i might even so that's pretty clear right that that's a scooper and i'm going to draw six of them because this in my when i make coffee that's invariably how many um, scoops of coffee I put in. Well, that's for coffee, not cappuccino. I know. So what I'm describing here is not an authentic. I don't have an espresso maker, so I am talking about how I would make. Like if you came to my house, and I said, after dinner, I said, "Oh, it's like a cappuccino," and you said, "Yeah, sure. I, this is what I would be doing." It would be fake. It would be fake. A fake cappuccino. Um, decaf too. If you're Italian, you know, yeah, it might be it might be decaf or half calf because it's after dinner and we're old, and that's you know that's what we do. So okay, so there's six scoopers, six scoops. I think that that's relatively clear that you would understand that that was six scoops. Okay, um, and then I'm going to put that into my grinder. Quite proud of my. Is it brawn our grinder? I think it is. It's an electric grinder, so it has that. Krups. Krups, uh, yes. And he was German of one kind or another. Krups, were they the bomb makers during World War II? Probably. Seriously? I think so. That's my association with the name. And then it has sort of like a button thing here. It sits in the top. 
like that. So, and then I could say, um, I might want to indicate the time that I want to pulse this. I want to pulse it for, um, let's say, eight seconds. So that's like a little timer thing that says, okay, it's been eight seconds. I think you have to do something to like indicate how noisy it is when it's grinding. Yes, that's true. Maybe like little wavy lines around it. It could be. Uh, here, I, I'll do this. Um, I'm going to draw a person wearing protective headgear. What? To indicate <laughs> that it's very noisy. And this person is 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 unhappy, but they're wearing protective headgear because it is very noisy. Yeah, you made a real weird left turn. This is just saying, like, do it for eight seconds and wear protective headgear, protective uh, ear gear when you do it. Why not? Okay, so now, next step is going to be boiling some water. So I'm going to indicate my kettle here. And uh, it is boiling. It's an electric kettle too. So I'm going to put in the, the uh, cord. Now you could misinterpret this and think, oh, unplug these things, but don't unplug them. If you're that, if you're that um, confused, then maybe you shouldn't be doing this. Okay, so that indicates that it's boiling. Yeah, now it just looks like the grinder. You see, Chris says we have ear protection next to our blender. Yeah, that's, it's responsible. Chris is a scientist. This is what people do. Elizabeth just buys ground coffee. Yeah, well, then we could eliminate this entire thing. We, yeah, could, I, I we could have a thing like says, or go to the store. <laughs> we could, I could draw somebody, I could draw a shopping cart. Maybe I'll do that. Okay. I'm going to draw a shopping cart just to indicate um, that, you know, you could just buy this at the store. Duncan. We could say, or. Okay, so I think that's clear. That's very clear, right? You can tell that's a shopping cart. Oh, it's like a backward American flag on wheels. Or a backward American flag on wheels, if you don't want to do it that way. Okay, so now here's the thing that I read, which is that when you make coffee, you shouldn't put boiling water. If you're doing a pour over, which is what I'm going to do, I'm going to draw, here's my pour over thing. Pour over, for those of you who aren't hipsters, like obviously I am, pour over or a Chemex is, uh, is like a thing like this. It's sort of shaped um, It's shaped like uh, an hourglass and it has a filter in here. Right? You remember Chemex? It was like a thing in the 70s. Well, it's back, and uh, it's how you make this coffee. So, and it, and it kind of drips in there, drips. So basically, when you boil the water, you're supposed to wait uh, two minutes. This time I'm going to draw two to indicate two minutes, because you wouldn't be able to tell otherwise that it was two. Two minutes? Uh, maybe I'll write two mins. Cheating a bit. But wait two minutes. Wait two minutes and then pour the water into this. You know what? I forgot to add the coffee. So that's a problem. So I need to take my coffee from here and indicate that it's going to go into there. I'm screwing it up already. <laughs> you didn't even need me to say it. Okay. I'm screwing it up, but I'm also solving it. What I'm kind of thinking is it's possible that I'm going to make an, such a complicated diagram that you will be so deeply confused by it that you never actually make a cappuccino and you just drink tea. But we'll figure it out. 
We'll see. We'll see what happens. This is a, a journey of, of discovery. Okay, next, what do we need next? We need no. a, a cow. So I'm going to have to draw a cow with horns. kind of cow that you milk doesn't have horns. Why not? It's a female. Do female cows have horns? Absolutely. Look, I grew up on a farm. I know what I'm talking about. I grew up in New York City. Okay, well, where I grew up used to be a far used to be farming country. Okay, so there's our cow. You know what I forgot? Udders. <laughs> Probably the most important part of it. Okay, so there's my cow, and this cow is now going to turn into, of course, um, a carton of milk. Now, see, this is the part people hate is when I make fun of your drawings. But how could I not make fun of that? Seriously, that's a very nice looking cow. <laughs> All right, so will you, will you stop? You'll be ejected from here. No. Okay. <laughs> Jen Cahill just said, is it the hundredth cat? <laughs> All right. You, you people are going to be punished. I'm going to have to now draw a hundred cows. Oh, oh my God. no. <laughs> yes, you see, Lisbeth, female cows have horns, and she also grew up on a farm. So there you go. All right. <clears throat> Viol Aquarius wants me to draw a shop. And that's a shopping cart. You can, that's that's true. Yes, yeah. this is a shop where Although you... This it doesn't look like a shopping No, this is the either. shop where you can either um, get it ground or buy it pre-ground. It almost looks like a unicorn. It says Buttercrafts. All right, so if you have unicorn milk, you could also use... <laughs> I was going to draw oats because that's the new thing is oat milk, um, particularly for cappuccinos. I've actually been drinking oat milk. I love oats, so it's not, it hasn't been too much of a... I'm kind of on a very long, gradual transition to becoming a vegan. Don't even tease people about but that. But it might take a really long... It might take the rest of my life. In the next life, I might become a vegan, but I'm making this slow process. Okay, so we've got the milk. Now, what do we want to do with the milk? We want to... Oh, yes. So I have a thing, which is a milk frother. Do you want me to get it so you can see what it Absolutely like? not, no. I'll do such a great drawing of it, people will go, oh yes, of course, it's that thing. So it, I have a feeling you're going to make it look just like it looks like a It looks like a tall beaker. It's like that. It's like it a tall... like the grinder. Yeah, it's like a tall beaker. And um, you put the milk into it. Not much. So that's another thing we have to indicate is... I think it's like two tablespoons. So you have to put in two tablespoons of milk and then you put that into into this thing frother this tall thing so you end up with like this this much milk maybe all right got it next microwave I'm sure there are Italian people who are watching this who are a microwave? Wait, what? Yes, we put it in the microwave. No, you do not put that in the microwave. Yes, of course I do. What else, what else do you think I do with it? Oh my goodness. I put it in the microwave for um, like 30 seconds, I think. Put it in the microwave. Here's the microwave. You can see the little thing in there. And there's the frother sitting on the little carousel. I think like every Italian person yeah, exactly. is watching this. Is Italians are just out. like freaking out this... This guy is uh, is a barbarian, but you know what the barbarians did to you, Italians? Need I remind you? Barbarians won. <laughs> so, so there you go. Okay, and there, that is going to be um, thirty seconds on the clock. <laughs> Lisa Stewart. <laughs> this is not how I make coffee. Yeah, I know. <laughs> But that's why you need me to give you the instructions on how I make it. If I just said to you, make me a cappuccino, you probably, you probably wouldn't go through this process. But if you wanted to make it my way, the, the right way, this is what you do. All right, so we've got the microwave in. 30 seconds have elapsed. We remove... 
Every, every week's right here. I'm embarrassed for you. <laughs> Truly, like the mic thing right. was a new low. Okay, so, <laughs> oh my God. I'm just trying to explain how to draw. I'm not a, I'm not a barista, but I know what I'm talking about. All right, so now we've got this thing out of the microwave and it's got this milk in it, but then you take this frother, which is basically like a little stick with a paddle at the bottom and you move it up and down. So I'm going to indicate that with a set of arrows. You move it up and down repeatedly until it bubble until it becomes frothy like that. Yeah, that's pretty clear. All right, you with me? We've got now we have the frothy milk. What else do we need to we need to do? I don't know. Probably. Okay, so now we need to introduce the, um, here's the cup the again. The little spoon, the little spoon. Yeah, I know, but we'd have to explain how you put the, this um, milk into, oh, I forgot to put the coffee into the cup. <laughs> All right, so we've got the, we, uh, here we go. We're going to explain this. So uh, here is the coffee maker with this newly made coffee. <laughs> not too excited about this being on the first page of her new sketchbook. <laughs> Let me just say this. If this is on the first page of your sketchbook, it can only get better. Exactly. <laughs> Will you stop? All right, so here goes the coffee. It's going into the cup. That's number one. And then number two is you're adding this frothy milk step number two and then you need uh, to add the, the little teaspoon and I was I'm going to draw a mouse next to this this um, to indicate that it is small you can tell that's a mouse right so that's that is a small teaspoon and you need to... Uh, Wait, why the mouse? To indicate that it's a small teaspoon. <laughs> the mouse is like proportionally... Yeah, it's a small like mouse. the size of the cow, the goat cow. All right, but I think, I think most people understand what that means. Okay. Some, of, some of you have tr difficulty understanding that. You know, I'm not sure what to tell you. Maybe you should be... You should, uh, you should just go to a coffee shop. Okay. So we've got that all. That is really the moral of the story. We've got it? the we've got all the elements here worked out. Everything is here. Have I forgotten anything? Oh, the sugar cube. Put it in a sugar cube. Cubes, I know how to draw really well. So there you go. You know, <laughs> you know that was like the most popular draw with me ever, right? I think this is good. I should bypass all these steps and just draw a Starbucks. <laughs> you forgot <clears throat> the clown shoes. <laughs> oh. God, this is... All right, I think I need to bring up my reference now. All right, so I'm going to use this reference to um, indicate. By the way, I'd like to apologize to Hannah Mula. Apologize to Rosalie. Yes. All right. So there we go. That is the uh, little ornamentation on the top. And maybe I will just indicate a little bit of color here. And uh, yeah. What else? I think I need to write this is. Yeah, you sure enough do. <laughs> Nobody would ever have any earthly idea. So cappuccino. Cappuccino, two C's, two P's.
and then I'm going to write as it should, something in the microwave. should be made. You know, if Koja was here, she would be yeah, appalled. That's, I mean, Koja has probably done something like this, but uh, I just, I, I'm going to send this to Koja so she knows how to do it properly. All right. All right, you're getting on my nerves now. So here, so I think I'm going to go back in. I've done that in brown pen. I think what will make it even better is to, uh, you know, just get into some adding some stuff. You know, maybe next time I'll work on one of those Heimlich maneuver charts, you know, where you explain to people how to save a life. See if I can reduce it to 40 or 50 steps. That would be good. I don't know. I wonder if anybody's going to chime in, tune in next time after this. <laughs> <clears throat> yes. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I'm, I'm pleased with that. I think uh, I just need to add a little bit of this. One of the nice things about um, tinted paper is you can actually use a white pencil. I have to say a white pencil is very pleasing to me. Isn't it? Oh, Isn't it? Just wonderful. See, it just brought it all together. Really satisfying. Really nice. Um, yeah. Any... Any uh, questions? <laughs> I mean, you didn't run out of room. True. <laughs> I managed to fit it all into a single page because I'm, you know, I'm a professional. Ah, okay. So here, there are some questions. Um, Max, May Rocks has a question, which is, when I want to make the cappuccino, when do I add a teaspoon of mouse before or after the milk? Well, it depends if you've put the mouse through the grinder or not. Oh my goodness. Or put it in the microwave. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay. I think that that's really good. I'm pleased with it. I hope you are too. Um, and now that you've seen how I do it, I look forward to seeing how you do it. Um, <clears throat> what does this teach us? It teaches us that you can make something fairly simple appear much more complicated, you know. But I think it's also actually quite clear. Like if this was if this was an IKEA, you know, one of those IKEA instructions, uh, I think you would know exactly what to do. Maybe maybe I would number it. You know, and you could go in and you could write some stuff in there. You could write it, write some stuff, but you could also make a poster out of it. You know, you could make a, a poster that you would hang in your kitchen as a reminder of how to make a cappuccino. You could make this big. I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of merit in here. So, yes. So, um, let's see where you go with it. All right. So now we've gone, f let's go from the, s from the ridiculous to the sublime. Um, because I'd like to share with you this week's sketchbook tour. Uh, you know, as I've, as I've mentioned to you before, we're doing this workshop called From Photo to Fabulous with Chris Kaler, who is an incredible artist. I've never seen him draw a cappuccino, actually. I might have to challenge him and see what he thinks about that. So, um, so let's try doing, looking at what he has done an example of his sketchbook. Now, this is a sketchbook that when we were filming this workshop, he came and showed me the sketchbook and it just blew my mind. And so he and I spent at least 30, 30 or 40 minutes going through this thing in detail. If you love sketchbooks, you'll want to watch the full video that we made of this tour. I'm just going to show you it speeded up because we only have a couple minutes here. But if you want to really learn 
about how to have the most incredible sketchbook ever or how somebody who does have one does it, um, you should watch this video. Um, it's on this channel. It's called the world's scariest sketchbook. And it's scary for two reasons. One, it's, uh, it's all about his favorite movie monsters. And two, because it is scary good. And you will get that. Can you that. say how long it takes him to make like one of these images? I don't know. He spends a lot of time yeah, on it. Yeah, he spends a lot of time. He spends so a lot of time. Yeah, it's really. It's, it's, it's sort of like the opposite of the cow. You made it's true. Yeah, it's this is like you've done. Yes, he does. Covered the steps. Yes, I haven't taken this workshop yet. Mm -hmm. So when I take it, I won't be drawing cows like you saw today. So in any case, let's have a look at Chris Kaler's uh, sketchbook, and then if you want to see it again, go and check out the whole video called The World's Scary Sketchbook. There's a f quick version of it and there's the full version, which is what you should watch, the director's cut. See what I mean? Scary, really scary. Uh, all drawn with uh, Pentel Arts brush pens, which he's going to talk to us about <clears throat> in this workshop. So I hope that you will have a chance to join us in the workshop. Um, where's that workshop? Do I have a thing? Yes, here it is, from Photo to Fabulous. September 25th. September 25th, from Photo to Fabulous. He's gonna talk about how he uses, um, uh, how he uses photo, uh, photography and photo reference to combine to create new images. And also he's going to show us how to use these Pentel Arts micro brushes, which are insane. Plus, can uh, I just say he's like the nicest the nicest guy. guy. I mean, nicest guy, great teacher. Jedediah, who we just worked with a couple of weeks ago, is maybe this is, is the runner up. No, but he's the nicest. Because Chris Kaler, now we've he's worked nice. with him twice, so he's number one. Yes, Chris Kaler's Chris nice. really nice. Ian Fenley is really nice. Oh, yeah, we talked to Ian Fenley yesterday. Guess what? Yeah, Ian Fenley, we're yep. going to be doing Come something. Back. So, Come yeah, back. so lots of stuff coming up. Um, but, you know, you got a couple weeks until this happens. So, But in the meantime, I want to see you tonight at 4.30 uh, p.m.
p.m. PT with your paper questions, and we will be talking about. Explain to people that it like quite helps us if they sign up. Yeah, yeah, it, Newton is sort of yeah, it helps us. It, it does help us vocal. because we want we want to. I mean, we put a lot of effort into making putting these things together. So we want to know that people are going to show up. Windsor Newton, who's sponsoring it, wants to know that people are going to show up. So please sign up. It's free. It's free. It's free. Yeah. It's free. So please do that, and we'll see you then. Um, it will be it will be really fun and uh, really or illuminating. Or just get the recording, but you have to sign up to get the recording. Right, sign up to get the recording. It's true. All right, are you done? Yep. Okay, cool. We'd love to see the art that you made this week, so please share it with us. Post it on social media, on Facebook, on Instagram, or in our own schoolyard, and tag it, SBS Draw With Me. Thanks very much to our sponsors, Hanamula and Windsor Newton. And if you'd like to continue to inspire your creativity, here are three suggestions. One, subscribe to this channel. We put out new videos several times a week, and we'll let you know when the next one comes out. Two, subscribe to my weekly newsletter. I write an essay every Friday full of inspiration and tips and jokes and various other things. Uh, thousands of people seem to like it, maybe because it's free, who knows. And thirdly, watch another video.